together. And so, if you will, let us pray. A God of liberty, we rejoice and thank you for the blessings of freedom which surround us and allow us to gather for worship. We praise you for the gift of living in a nation blessed in every way, with abundance, with peace, with opportunity for all. Help us to contribute to the well-being of others, to the gift of this nation. May we find ways of helping those in need, of caring for others in distress, and looking out for the common good of all. And we pray today not just for ourselves, and not only in gratitude for our country and your blessings on it, but for all people, everywhere. May all know your goodness and mercy and turn to you in repentance and faith. Be near to and strengthen and support all who hope and who labor in their own land for the freedoms we take for granted here. And finally, we pray for that abundant life, for wholeness and health, for joy and peace which you desire for all people. We pray and we remember especially those in the Pacific Northwest and Western Canada uh, suffering through the heat wave, those continuing to be uh, affected by the condominium collapse in Miami. Uh, we pray for the persecuted church in Nigeria and for people who suffer for the sake of conscience anywhere. And we name in this time of silence those in our hearts and our minds who are and have various kinds of and sorts of needs, different circumstances. We pray your, your healing, your wholeness, your presence, your support for them. And so, eternal God of all nations and peoples, we pray that that day would speedily arrive when your will is done on earth as it is in heaven. And so we pray with Jesus the prayer he taught his disciples to pray, even us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Uh, the scripture lesson for this 4th of July comes from the New Testament, from Galatians in chapter 5, verse 13. Listen for God's word. For you have been called to live in freedom, my brothers and sisters. But don't use your freedom to satisfy your sinful nature. Instead, use your freedom to serve one another in love. May God bless the reading and hearing of this portion of God's holy word.
National Compact when he wrote to the Massachusetts militia in 1798. When he wrote, Our Constitution was made only for a moral and religious people. It is wholly inadequate to the government of any other. Of the Declaration of Independence, our Constitution, don't laundry list out the rights or freedoms any government gives to people, but recognize the natural God-given rights and freedoms that already and always and everywhere exist, which governments tend to obscure. What the Constitution does is, is enumerate uh, and recognize those freedoms, those rights. So what Adams might have been getting at in that letter, in that observation, is that the space for freedom opened up by our Constitution was only going to work for a people inspired by broader motivations and deeper commitments than their own selfish aims. In the 19th century, uh, Alexis de Tocqueville, a French aristocrat and politician and proponent of American style freedom in France, recorded his observations of the United States based on his travels through the states of the time and his work, Democracy in America. De Tocqueville wrote, when citizens can associate only in certain cases, they regard association as a rare and singular process, and they hardly think of it. But then writing specifically of America, when you allow them to associate freely in everything, they end up seeing in association the universal and, so to speak, unique means that men can use to attend the various ends they propose. Each new need immediately awakens the idea of association. The art of association then becomes, as I said above, the mother science. Everyone studies it and applies it. De Tocqueville offered his witness an assessment of the massive energy and interest behind the plethora of associations that sprang up in the years following the successful resolution of the American War for Independence, associations which were aimed at improving the circumstances spiritually and materially of fellow citizens. Americans in the first decades of the 19th century, throughout the 19th century, but in those first decades especially, flex the new national character shaped by Christian values and with a freedom unknown in human history, spawn what has been styled the benevolent empire of associations and societies and fraternities and federations that were formed for the improvement of human life. Those Americans, our forebearers, applied the truth contained in Galatians 5.13. Freedom was used as an opportunity to pursue the common good, the well-being of others. The standard of freedom was and is a call to service. Those early Americans formed the American Tract Society, the American Home Missionary Society, the American Temperance Society, various working men's benevolent associations, anti-slavery societies, women's suffrage associations, societies and associations to assist and aid orphans and prostitutes and immigrants and farmers and on and on. The freedom recognized and codified in our founding documents were not understood by most 19th century American Christians as a license to pursue hedonistic or selfish ends, but rather as an invitation to larger purposes and to broader impulses. And that same invitation carries over and on to us in the 21st century. The impulse to serve the common good in early America, which continues today, is, I would submit, rooted in the example of Jesus and in the ethic that Paul communicates to us in Galatians in our reading today. Jesus secures our freedom, freedom from the condemnation of the law, which we cannot perfectly keep, but which Christ keeps perfectly on our behalf, freedom from death and sin through the sacrifice and resurrection by Jesus for our sake, freedom from fear and despair through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit in our lives, to name, to point out just a few of those 
fundamental freedoms that come to us through the person and work of Jesus. What our passage this morning tells us is that we have been called through Christ to freedom, but that freedom is not an end in itself, but is a calling to use freedom as a means, as an opportunity to look out for the well-being of the other guy or gal. When the Hebrews were led by the Spirit of God out of slavery in Egypt and into freedom, the biblical witness has it that they were led to freedom in order to serve God in the wilderness in Exodus chapter 7, to live into their covenant calling to be a blessing to the nations. We have freedom for something, not just freedom from something. We have freedom to be and to become. We have freedom to inquire and to confess our convictions. We have freedom to seek the happiness of others. Freedom leads us naturally into community, into the bonds of fraternity with those around us, with our fellow Christians. And as I say, it's no different today than it was in the 19th century. Uh, Christian faith inspires and motivates and impels service to others, uh, both on, by, by those who have Christian faith and by those who don't necessarily uh, have faith or affiliation uh, with a Christian church, but uh, in whose hearts and minds a Christian faith and its ethic continues to redound and to echo. The founders were a generation of apparently singled out in God's providence for a peculiar mission to benefit not just the people of the United States, but the world. That is an inheritance that has fallen to us as American citizens and as those who call ourselves disciples of Jesus as well. We have been called into freedom in order to share that freedom with the world through doing good, through sharing the gospel, through attending to the welfare and the well-being of others by living out the example of Jesus. And so let us pray. May we, living God, live in gratitude for the freedoms that we enjoy as Americans and for the salvation we have received through your Son, Jesus. Allow us to use our liberties and freedoms to the end that others might themselves be free to live into their full humanity and their calling as your own beloved sons and daughters. Amen.